What's up everybody and welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're going to be talking about my experience at combatives when I was at basic military training, Beast Week. But before we get into all that fun, let's cover the basics. My name is Michael Inman and I'm an airman in the United States Air Force. I upload a video every Monday, so if you like military and or Air Force content, definitely hit the subscribe button and make sure you turn the notification bell to on so you know when I upload a brand new video. But without further ado, let's jump into this very, very bumpy story. So everyone, the time has finally come to tell you guys the story about combatives. A couple people in the comment section have asked me about this story, but I've been going through a lot, okay? A lot of things, a lot of things. So, no bad things, don't worry, thank you for your concern. However, life has been definitely all over the place the last few weeks. So, thank you for your patience. Thank you guys for sticking in, the, in this with me, and I'm excited to kind of, sort of, in a way, see all of your faces again. Anywho, <laughs> yeah, so we're finally at the story of combatives, and let's jump on in. Actually, pause. The first thing I should mention about combatives, and if you don't know what combatives is, it's pretty much where, really, for real this time, you learn how to fight, kind of, with caveats. <laughs> But this is the moment during your basic military training experience, most likely, of course, at Beast Week. But of course, they can move around when you learn combatives, when you go to basic training. But for me, when I was in basic training, it was during Beast Week. And so combatives is when you not only are taught a few things on how to hold yourself during a fight, but also you get to fight one of your peers. All of this is slightly exaggerated, which we'll get into the details soon, but that is what combatives is. The first thing, for real, for real, for real, the first thing I want to mention about my combatives experience and or pretty much probably everyone's combatives experience, I like to think, was that it was definitely a bumpy situation. However, however, it was a lot of fun. I did, when I look back, probably by the time we were leaving combatives. I was like, okay, low key. It went a little interestingly, which you'll hear about, but low key, it was fun. Like I had not a ball. It wasn't a ball. It was not a gala, <laughs> but it was still a positive experience. Like a roller coaster. You didn't want to ride at first, but then after you get off, you're like, wow, I think I'd do it again. I think. <laughs> That is just the first thing to start off with. We are actually gonna be covering, I think, three or four different aspects of combatives. So let's jump into the first one. And the first one actually is what we will call this chapter, let's get down to business. Yes, that is a Mulan reference. So when I describe it to you guys, I need you to be hearing the Mulan song in your head. Are you tracking? Are you with me still? Perfect. So now that we have the let's get down to business track starting, the first aspect of combatives that uh, you should probably know about is somewhere after you get off the bus, once you've been bused to the part of beast, the beast camp or the beast grounds where combatives takes place, sometime after you get off the bus, you will start the portion where they're teaching you the basic components of hand-to-hand -hand combat. And so you are in, like, I mean, I'm pretty sure there's hundreds of you guys. At least 200, right? I don't know how many people go to Beast Week each week during BMT, but just know at minimum there are at least 200 of you guys in like all of these rows, like just never ending lines of airmen. So you get organized into these clean rows that just goes on for miles. No, not really. Maybe a, a yard, a couple yards. I don't know. There's rows and rows of airmen. Once you guys are organized in your rows, that is when an instructor on a stage will have some kind of loudspeaker and a microphone, I don't know, and starts going, okay, everyone, you know, uh, put a little bit of space between your two feet, make sure one foot is slightly above so you have a good, you know, center of gravity. That is when, once again, let's get down to business. That is when you all start doing the, yeah, yeah, because first they'll teach you uh, your strikes. So first they'll teach you strikes with your, uh, Arms, hands, fist, fist. <laughs> and then after that, they will teach you um, strikes with your legs. So how to do proper kicks. So after learning how to strike with your hands and your legs, then it then moves on to blocks and movements. 
So blocks, of course, are going to be hya, hya, again. As you see a montage of you learning these, um, I don't know, learning these moves, remember that you are listening to what song in the back? You're seeing a montage of all hundreds of us doing the same things at the same time via the person on stage's instruction. And then we then transition into movements. So how do you properly shift left, shift right, dodge, you know, those type of things. So that's all happening. Maybe you're probably 30 minutes into maybe 45 minutes in to this quick, <laughs> quick how to fight training session. And then the last thing that they then take you into lesson wise is what I call the rebound, because I don't really remember the proper terminology. I don't tend to get into fights and alleys. I'm sorry, it's not something that's a pastime as of now, so. So a rebound via my definition is when you fall back and how to like slightly catch yourself or at least land and then put your hand behind you so that you can almost roll yourself back up and be back in the fight, okay? so. The, those are the different elements that you are going to be taught during the let's get down to business portion. Because again, there are hundreds of you guys all facing a stage, at least pre-2020, this is how it went, <laughs> all facing the stage and doing all these moves in sync because they are instructing you via microphone and all of you guys are learning the same things at once. So it's a very cool um, experience. However, you are starting to build a little anxiety or excitement depending upon what type of person you are um, because you know that they're teaching you this because sparring is coming up soon. Like eventually you're gonna have to fight someone and you're like, oh my God, I wonder if I get pummeled. Oh no, pummeled or pummeled? Pum, pummeled, pummeled, beat up. I don't know, I really don't. <laughs> so you're, you're starting to get anxious or you are getting excited because you're like, I already know this or, okay, I, I've got it. I'm feeling confident. I'm ready to fight someone. <laughs> One of the two things are going through your head or both. Let's move on to what is next. And of course, sorry to just jump right straight to it. But after you are taught how to hold yourself, at least, you know, generally during a battle or during a, a sparring match, that is when the pairing up starts to happen and the sparring begins. Now, the pairing up, you are told to pair up with someone relatively within your height area, height and mass. So of course I was doing a quick scan for people not only in my flight, but also people outside of my flight update. You, at least when I went, you did not spar people in your flight. Now that might be changed now because it seems kind of smart to do it that way now, but at least when I went, you did, you were actually specifically told to find someone in a flight that is not in your flight, so no, you know, releasing frustration with people in your flight that have annoyed you the whole time. Sorry. So you quickly begin to scan for people not in your flight that look similar to you um, stature wise. It's Cause I'm very tall and I'm pretty lean. So I was like, God, please let me find someone like that and not like the only other six, four person I could find. And they happen to be like, <laughs> that would be tragic. So I do find someone who is maybe 6'2", but also kind of lean. They have a little bit more muscle mass than me, but it's fine. As you guys know, we're working on so, it. The way it works is you and your person are kind of like getting, oh, you get, you and your person stand next to each other, and then you make this mega line of pairs all in this huge line leading to the front, which means, hey, it's your turn to spar. And this line is a huge circle. So now, pause, I need you to see Gladiator in your head. Maybe the movie or just any gladiatorial, that, is that a word? <laughs> any gladiator-like scene in your head in which, you know, there are, there's a huge circle and people are fighting in the middle and everyone's going, ah, yeah, yeah. That's what's happening. So, eventually, after a long wait, it is my turn and I'm sure you are excited to know how I did or did not do. <laughs> So, my partner and I, which I will call Alfie, because that seems like an interesting name to pick, and it starts with an A, and I don't know, the letter A was on my mind. So, Alfie and I go toward the middle of the circle, and the only thing in my head is, Lord, just let me last five seconds. 
Please, just don't let it be quick. Cause that's too embarrassing. We go in, Alfie and I were, were in, we are ready for the buzzer or really just the MTI next to us to go, go. <laughs> I am in my fighting position. I am ready. <laughs> and all I know is everyone from my flight is they're looking at me clearly because I don't know if they expect much from me either. So everyone's ready. Everyone's ready to see how I do. The MTI, he says, go. You know, I'm standing there, I'm, I'm dodging, I'm, I'm trying, and then out of nowhere, because of course, uh, Alfie, um, he starts, he, he gets a few, he tries to go for it a few times. And luckily, I think I dodge like one or two. <laughs> one or two, only. Because all I remember is after the one or two that I felt pretty proud that I had dodged, is Alfie was on me like syrup on a pancake. Alfie moved in quick. Out of nowhere, I was being hit left, right, right, left, 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 right, right, left, and right, and left. Back and forth. Back and forth. So, in this moment of just Panic. No, I was not panicking. I was just more like, oh my God, this is what's going on. How do I get him away from me? I'm getting hit left and right and right and left, back and forth. But interestingly enough, I then have another thought of, okay, I'm not quite sure how to get Alfie away from me. But what I am going to focus on is not falling. In that moment, I'm like, okay, Michael, Angle forward a, lot, a little bit, keep your feet behind you a bit because there's this force called Alfie pressing upon you. So when you create this kind of angle, his energy is just being directed straight toward the ground because my feet are able to just have it be an angle. So it's like, uh. So thus it's harder, unless he did some kind of top to push me this way, it would have been hard for me to now just crumble this way or to just totally fall over because I was at a nice angle countering his <laughs> that. <laughs> So long story short, I don't know how long I was up. I don't know how long the match was, but I am proud to say that I did not go to the ground. And that was happening left and right, of course, in other sparring matches. People would go to the ground and the person was on top of them. And then the MTI is like, pause, stop. Oh, hey, hey, hey. <laughs> but for me, I kept getting hit. And at one point, Alfie was doing this, like, you know, where he keeps hitting the middle area. like, <laughs> And I'm just like, angled correctly and be like, <laughs> <laughs> but I will not fall. That was my, you know, resolution. And it, you know, I made sure that it happened. So I was happy that in the end, I did not go to the ground, but Alfie definitely won. <laughs> but also worth mentioning that my peers in my flight were in a way proud of me because at first they were like, ooh, you got, that was rough, and then we were concerned for you. But you didn't fall. You did it. You just took it. You were just like, I'm not moving. I was a wall <laughs> that I like to think Alfie couldn't get through. But that's me probably rounding up. If he really, really was trying to push me over, he probably could have. But he was really just focused on doing this a lot. And I was like, I can handle this. This, I'm, I'm fine. Now that we talked about sparring, let's talk about another fun aspect of combatives. And that would be the pugil sticks. Now, the pugil sticks, I'm sure you can imagine, are the sticks that look like this. You hold them like this, and there's like a cushiony thing over here and a cushiony thing over there. Think of it like a, a Q-tip, but big and plastic with styrofoam somewhere. It's not styrofoam, but you get it. So you have your pugil stick, and you're like, uh, uh, and you're like, uh, 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 uh. Yeah, that. Now it's time for pupil sticks. So following your sparring match, you are then guided to another line, which is forming, but moving a little quicker, in which it is a sparring match, but with pupil sticks. And you are, of course, with the same person. So for me, the person who just whooped my mm in front of everyone, but you know, no hard feelings. Shout out to you, Alfie. Anywho, so then you move on to pupil stick land. And eventually it is your turn. So prior to it being your turn, you are going to be told to put on a, a hat, uh, maybe a guard, some kind of hat, maybe in some kind of cushion thing. I don't know. There are other things you've been wearing during this combatives day that keep you safe, like helmets and stuff. So you just get a different version of helmet and stuff when you get to Pugil land. So when it was my turn, when it was Alfie and I's turn to Pugil it up, as um, I would say, <laughs> this time he still won. However, caveat. I got some more hits in this time. 
and it helped that uh, some peers from my flight were yelling at me, Ibn, hit him low, hit him low. Because I get a little, you know, like a little lost, you know, when it's all happening. You're like, oh my God, I'm just trying to survive. And so I'm glad people from my flight cut through that and said, Edmund, snap out of it, hit him back. So I did get a few hits in. Um, it was much closer to parody this time around. By that, I mean, of course, he still probably got 65% of the total hits and I came in strong with a 35%, but it's higher than my five to 10% with the sparring match, the gladiatorial sparring match. So, Pugil Sticks is also kind of fun. I like the sparring more, because uh, Pugil Sticks, I don't know, it's a, lot, it's a lot of coordination, and I don't know, I don't play video games, I'm not good at this, I'm not good at this, it was, that was a lot. So, anywho, some people will like Pugil Sticks more, other people will like sparring more. There we go. So after you've done your Pugil Stick session, that is when, I'm not sure if it always happens, but I will tell you guys the story just in case it happens for you too and it's something you can look forward to. Following our pugil stick session, and pretty much I think when about 80 to 90% of everyone had already sparred and done pugil sticks, that is when the a large circle started reforming because pretty much the MTIs were being cool and maybe they always do this every week with every group of flights, I don't know, or it was just special for ours. But the MTIs were like, okay guys, We've heard that you guys want to see dorm chiefs go against each other. That's what we've heard, okay? So now that most of y'all have gone and we've saved the best for last, start forming up and we're gonna watch it go down. <laughs> now for contact, for context, shout out to my former dorm chief. He was a very buff man. <laughs> Not super tall, but like a big dude, like, whoa. So, you know, my money's on my dorm chief. I, I'm like, he is gonna, he's gonna end it. KO, whoever goes against him, I'm sorry. The, now, the dorm chief, because there are a couple flights here at Combatives with us, the dorm chief that he is actually paired with is, I don't know, some guy that, based on the rumors I was hearing, or maybe I had seen him fight and I just don't remember, or maybe, I, I don't know, I don't remember. But you could tell he had some MMA training. So he was not as buff as my dorm chief, but rumor has it, this guy, he's like, I know how to fight, y'all. I've been doing MMA for years. Let's go. This is my moment. I'm going to show this dorm chief what's good. We all make a big circle like it's a, you know, a third grade or maybe sixth grade fight <laughs> in, the, in the back of the school uh, during recess. I don't know. After school, I was not part of these, but this is when I think it happens. After school, right? Anywho, we make a large circle. Um, the fight is about to begin. The MTI is ready to go, go, and he does it. My dorm chief and the other dorm chief, we're going to call him uh, Kung Fu Panda. There we go, trying to get copyrighted again. Hello. So Kung Fu Panda and MPS for the record. This has nothing to do with any race, by the way. This person was not... Uh, Asian, he was not. It's just, it just makes sense because he clearly knows Kung Fu. This person that I won't specify what they look like, but just know they know Kung Fu or at least some forms of MMA, probably more than one. So just getting that out of the way before you start assuming things about what I'm saying. So the match goes a little sideways because right when they, right, right when the MTI says go, no one was ready for it. But um, Kung Fu Panda just jumps in the air, spins once, maybe twice, and just kicks my door chief in the head. Like, we were all like, ah! <laughs> it is worth mentioning that that's not allowed. <laughs> There's no, I don't think you were allowed to kick during the sparring match, first of all. Definitely no jump in the air, spin like you're a freaking Power Ranger and just knock someone out with their foot. <laughs> and that's exactly what happened in the first three seconds of this match. And the crowd went wild. We were like, what the fudge? That happens. Uh, our dorm chief is on the ground. <laughs> we're concerned. We're like, does he have a concussion? What's happening? He's not knocked out at all. But we're just like, oh, shoot. Ah. So that happens. Um... <laughs> 
The MTIs were like, whoa, that's not allowed. You need to go, cancel everything. You just broke the rules. You're probably getting paperwork to be, to be determined. But then my dorm keeper gets up, he's like, that wasn't cool, let's go, let's go. But you can tell he's serious. Now he's like, oh, we playing games? So the MTI is like, well, the dorm chief clearly ain't out of the count yet. He's, we gonna do three rounds. Let's see how it goes, second round. Okay, okay, y'all both, you're both still going. But this time the MTI does look at Kung Fu Panda and says, none of that ever again. You better, you better keep your feet on the ground. Keep your feet on the ground. So, um, the second match begins and my dorm chief is not playing no games. He ain't playing no games this time around. He says, nope. So he goes in for it and not to be anticlimactic, but both the second and the third round, my dorm chief said, you tried it, shut down. <laughs> he went in like a tornado, just <laughs> The guy, Kung Fu Panda was on the ground, probably 60% of the time, both matches, my dorm chief was just not letting up. It was quite impressive. It was like, you tried me at the, during the first match. You might've even embarrassed me a bit. Now I gotta embarrass the hell out of you. <laughs> and he did such, he did that, okay? So that is how the dorm chief battle, uh, you know, transpired for our uh, week at Beast Week. I do hope that you get to experience such an awesome um, I don't know, tradition when you and your flight and other flights, of course, go to Beast Week, specifically combatives, because it is really cool. Like it, it feels like a, an entire event. Like they probably start like trash talking each other, the different dorm chiefs right at the beginning of the day at combatives. And then, cause they know rumor has it, dorm chiefs get to be paired and get to battle each other. So it, it feels by the end of the day, after you're exhausted from your own sparring and pugil stick moments, by the end of the day, you were like, oh shoot, oh shoot, how our dorm chief gonna do, let's go. In the end, our dorm chief won two out of three, and really the first round didn't even count. The guy was disqualified because he did a roundhouse kick out of nowhere. What? <laughs> I hope you enjoyed the story, I hope you enjoyed the Mulan moment, and the entire uh, narrative of how Combatives was for me. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for tuning in per usual. Always great to chit chat with you guys. And what else? If you like this video, definitely subscribe. Definitely comment any questions or just comments below. <laughs> and also like the video because it really does help. I wish you a great rest of your week and I will be seeing you next Monday.